Hi, I'm Heidi Hewitt, User Success Manager at Brixis, the makers of BrixCAD software. After more than three decades as an AutoCAD user, and almost as long working for the makers of AutoCAD software, I've recently made the move to Brixis and BrixCAD. As a former AutoCAD user and engineer in the building industry, I find the BrixCAD solution for building information modeling very exciting. I can apply my decades of AutoCAD experience to a BIM workflow without ever leaving my familiar and comfortable DWG file format. DWG is the native file format for BricsCAD BIM. I never knew DWG could be this powerful and easy, but it's true. And not only is DWG at the foundation of BricsCAD BIM, it's also the native file format for BricsCAD Shape, a free standalone modeling app you can download right now from Brixis. Whether you create your 3D model in Shape, BricsCAD, AutoCAD, or other solid modeling apps, you can easily add BIM to your workflow. Let's take a look at solid modeling in Shape, for example. We'll start with simple solid geometry, a box. Using the manipulator, we can quickly transform the box into a more interesting shape by rotating several faces. Hovering the cursor over a face offers relevant editing tools, including the ability to quickly offset a boundary and then extrude that boundary all the way through the model to make a hollow volume. Then we can slice the model at the floor and ceiling and separate the walls to create four individual solids. We'll use extrude again to create a sidewall from the outer polyline and then copy it to the other side. Next, we'll create the entrance by drawing a simple rectangular profile on the sidewall and extruding it partway through the building. We'll draw a new wall from the floor to the ceiling and connect it to the outer wall, and then extrude the floor slab. Now we're ready to model the interior of the building. We'll create a slab for the second floor by extruding and connecting to the walls. Continuing to use these simple and intuitive modeling tools, we'll copy one of the sidewalls to create an interior wall and then extrude through the exterior wall to create a large hole. We'll create the frame next. First, we'll offset the outer edge of the wall and then we'll extrude it as a surface. We can easily thicken that surface into a solid. We'll copy the frame to create our main supporting structure and to make it easier to focus on, we'll isolate the frames, hiding all the other geometry. Now we're ready to create the cross beams. We'll start with a solid box and then copy it multiple times even more than what we need across the roof. We'll use the extra ones for the wall structure. We can easily rotate them into the proper position using the manipulator. And we can do something similar on the opposite side. We'll copy several of the cross beams and rotate them down the wall. We'll finish the frame structure by extruding between the cross beams and copying that extrusion consistently down the length of the frame. Finally, we'll copy the frame structure down the entire length of the building and add one more set of supports at the very end. What started as a simple box is looking more and more like a building, but we're not done yet. We need to extend the last set of cross beams beyond the edge of the frame. It's easy to do by selecting aligned faces and extruding them all at once. We'll quickly repeat the same process on the opposite side of the building. Now we're ready to create a surface to represent the translucent material over the structure. We'll draw a 2D polyline by aligning to the face of one of the cross beams and then snap to key points on other cross beams. Then, having a 2D profile, 
we simply extrude it to the opposite end of the building to create a surface. We can thicken the surface to the desired thickness of our translucent cover, and voila, we're done modeling. Now we're ready to add materials for realism. Selecting from the materials library, we'll add glass to the roof, brick to the walls, and wood to the frames. We could stop here and be very happy with our model, but maybe instead of simple rectangular beams, we want I-beams. We can select all the beams and easily replace them with an alternate profile, selecting from standard beam sizes. The beams convert to I-beam profiles that are stored in the database and can easily move on to BIM. Just like that, we've added more realistic detail to our model and moved it farther along the design process. We'll continue enhancing the model just a bit more, preparing for conceptual design review by quickly adding furniture components. You can choose from the default component libraries, and of course you can insert 3D blocks or model geometry from other sources. In less than 10 minutes, we created a realistic, 3D conceptual design from start to finish using Brixis Shape. And the best part is that Shape's native file format is DWG, the same file format that's native to BricsCAD. So we can take any design we model in Shape straight into BricsCAD. There we can apply all our existing modeling skills to a more intelligent BIM workflow, taking our design from concept all the way through design documentation and beyond. Using BricsCAD BIM, you can easily add valuable building information to your otherwise ordinary solid model. And as I mentioned previously, the model doesn't even have to start in BricsCAD. You can, of course, create it in BricsCAD, but you could also create it using Shape, or even other 3D modeling applications such as AutoCAD. Here we have a model of a tower complex. The interesting part about this model is that it consists of different XREFs. For example, these two towers consist of 19 different XREFs, whereas this building here is one XREF on its own. Let's open this XREF to see what's inside. This model is a conceptual design of a small building. As you can see in the structure browser, this is a purely geometrical model. There is no information added to this model yet. One of BricsCAD's design assistance tools called BIMify allows you to turn a geometrical model into the start of a BIM model. Let's launch BIMify and see what happens. As we can see now in the structure browser, all our elements have been classified automatically. BIMify has analyzed the elements geometry and based on artificial intelligence, classified them into BIM objects. This is why it's easy to start from a geometrical model and move on to BIM. BIMify also recognizes steel profiles. BIMify even goes one step further. It has detected that this drawing has one building and inside this building are two floors. These floors were also assigned to the proper elements. Now, these walls know they are walls, but they don't have any information about material or composition yet. Let's apply some compositions. Here we have a library of pre-made compositions. Of course, you can create your own compositions as well. You can simply drag a composition onto an element and it will be applied. Note that the wall thickness is updated accordingly. Now, let's design the connection detail between the floor and the walls. We can simply drag the ply faces to model the desired connection. Next, let's insert some components into our model. Here we have a pre-made window that fits in between these frames. We'll just copy this over a couple of times. 
We can also create windows starting from any shape. Let's draw a polyline on this wall using offset. We can turn this offset into a window with one simple command. Now we just need to choose a layout. And just like that, we have created a window. What's even better, it's fully parametric. In the Properties panel, we can find its parameters. Changing the values of these parameters will change the geometry as well. Parametric components are not just limited to windows and doors. They can be anything from furniture to staircases. Here, for example, we have a very simple parametric staircase. Looks like the height of the staircase doesn't match the floor to floor height. Let's quickly fix this by changing the parameters. Let's save this drawing and go back to the master model. If we reload this XREF, we will see that the changes we made are also visible in the main model. We can continue using the building model when we're ready to create construction documents. Here, we've added various section planes. They are useful not only to help us visualize the interior spaces, we can also generate 2D section details from them. We simply select the sections we want to generate, all of them in this case, and just like that, a new drawing with detail sections is automatically created. Let's take a look at another XREF. In this drawing, most of the elements have already been assigned materials and compositions, as we can see here. However, the connections between the slabs and walls haven't been designed yet. In fact, none of the details have been designed, except for this one right here. We can use this one detail as an example for the rest of our drawing. We'll select this slab and wall and use BIM Suggest. BricsCAD is now scanning the drawing for all the locations where this particular connection can be applied. OK, it's done scanning. All the green ticks are possible locations where this connection can be applied. We can toggle off certain locations, for example, if we want to design a different connection there. This symbol here shows that there are more locations that are currently hidden because of an active section. Clicking it will reveal these locations. We'll accept this, and now the changes are being made throughout our drawing. If we now go back to our wall slab connections, we will see that the detail was made throughout the entire drawing. We can do the same, for example, for column floor connections. Here we see a whole bunch of columns that don't have their base designed yet. We want the columns to go through the floor finishing, so they rest on the concrete layer of the slab. Let's create this connection once. Now we can use the same technique to apply this to all other columns. It's also possible to toggle off a group of locations. Okay, now all the column bases are properly designed. BricsCAD BIM is certified by Building Smart for IFC import and export. For this building, we have received an IFC file that contains an HVAC system for the upper floor of the building. Let's import it and see what it looks like. We can see that all the geometry was properly imported. Not only the geometry was imported, all the metadata that was associated with the elements is imported as well. Here, we can see a whole list of properties that were imported via the IFC file. These properties can also be found in the BIM Properties dialog. Here, we can find all the properties that are governed by the IFC standard, as well as custom properties. Let's create a new property set and associate it with all the building elements. Inside this set, we'll create new properties. If we now select a building element, we'll see that these properties are now associated with this element. Let's go back to our master model and open another XREF. 
In this drawing, most materials and details have been designed already. We can use this section here to create a 2D drawing. Right now, BricsCAD is creating a new DWG file with the 2D floor plan of the building. Let's open it. This drawing displays all the details such as door swings or materials. We can automatically annotate this drawing. Room tags have been added as well as wall tags, windows, and doors. These tags are completely customizable and fully associative as well. If we now make a change in our 3D model, we will see these changes reflected on the 2D drawing. For example, we'll shift this wall and change the name of this door. If we now update the 2D plan, we will see that everything was updated. The wall tag shifted from the wall, the room area was updated, and the door tag changed. Of course, you can annotate these drawings as much as you want. Here we have some examples of drawings that were heavily annotated. Well, what do you think? What you saw here is just a small sample of BIM functionality in BricsCAD. But don't take my word for it. Go to Brixis.com and install the free trial. It gives you access to BricsCAD Platinum Edition and all the BIM functionality for 30 days. And don't just install the trial, use it. I promise you'll love it. And to stay current on everything BricsCAD, subscribe to the Brixis blog. You can follow along with me as I learn and share all that BricsCAD has to offer as I move from AutoCAD to BricsCAD. Also, follow Brixis on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube. And you can follow me, Heidi L. Hewitt, on LinkedIn and Twitter.